This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura and I'm your host today. And this is the show uh, where we talk about condominium living and we deal with issues uh, for people who live and work uh, with condominium associations. And I have as my guest today, uh, David Thompson. Uh, and uh, David is from Hawaiiana Management. Yes. And he is a senior uh, management executive. And thank you for coming. Thank you, I really appreciate you having me on today. And, and you're, you are a senior management executive, so, so tell me what, that, what you do. Oh, what that means is I've been in the industry for a while. And, you know, as noticed by my uh, accreditations, the PCAM and the ARM and the CMCA, I've been in the industry for a while. I've had uh, education uh, within my industry. So, um, and what that does is it allows me to work with the board of directors on a real professional level, uh, work with the owners, uh, help them achieve their goals. Okay, and, and uh, tell me what a PCAM designation means. So, a PCAM is a is the third level in the education process under CAI, uh, Community Associations Institute, which is a national program. Uh, the PCAM study uh, is a special uh, case study that we do in which we have to examine an entire building. We have to interview uh, the board members, the insurance agent, the attorney, uh, the resident manager, um, and we have to do a complete study on a particular project. Mine was done in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, so you have to learn on how a building operates and how, and, and the, the different pieces of how uh, to manage a building. Yes. And how to deal with the residents. Yes. And as, as a, an account executive for Hawaiian Management, you basically uh, assist condominium and uh, co-op and uh, planned community development. Association. Yeah, as well as commercial projects as well. Okay. Yeah. And so, and, and in the, all of those cases, Hawaiian Management is a managing agent for the association. Correct. Okay, let's focus on condominiums. So, if it's a condominium association and Hawaiiana is a managing agent, what does that mean? Well, what, the board hires us to help them uh, manage their financial matters as well as assist them, uh, assist them with the uh, board meetings. Um, we help them with uh, uh, any vendor uh, liaison issues, government liaison issues, uh, help them with their, their tax returns, their association meetings, their budget. There's a lot of things that we help them with. And with, with condominium boards, they're all volunteers, right? Yes, they're all volunteers. And they all own units in that particular building? Yes. And, so, and, and how often do they meet? Um, it can vary. So some of them meet once a month. Some meet every three months, some twice a year, some even one month. Okay, yet under their documents, the board is charged with managing and operating the building. Correct, yes, they have the final decision making. And so, so exactly how does this work? Because they only meet once a month or once every few months and they hire Hawaiiana to be their managing agent. So what exactly does Hawaiiana do uh, to assist the board in uh, their obligation to manage and operate this building? Well, the board uh, is organized in such a way as they have a uh, president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, and in addition to the other directors. And we work directly with the board president in establishing an agenda for the upcoming meeting. We help uh, pull all the materials together for their uh, board packet, uh, pull together all the uh, uh, proposals for contracts and maintenance items, uh, financial reporting, uh, system with any types of financial matters and such as investment of savings accounts, um, house rules, issues, anything that they have going on at that given moment. And so, so the board basically when they meet at their monthly or their regular meetings, they look at d d their various issues and they make decisions and they're not involved in the day-to-day -day implementation, are they? Not generally. We do keep them informed on a regular basis, so as needed, we will keep them informed and, and involved. We mainly work with one person on the board 
sometimes we work with the entire board at the same time. And, and, so, and, and, and with most associations, there's a site manager or a resident manager. Many, yeah. And, and you either, and, and then they, in, in fact, uh, supervise a, a staff, a maintenance staff, a security staff, or, or maybe they're outsourced, right? These, these are decisions that the board makes, and the managing agent helps implement these decisions. Yes, so the board can choose to have a contracted site manager, which would be a, a separate management company that would help assist with the, the data day matters on the site, or they can hire an employee. The employee uh, works for the association, not Hawaiiana Management, and uh, that employee is tasked with everything and can oversee all the other employees on the property. Okay. And you know, there's been a misconception, you know, in you know, because I've been involved in a lot of legislative issues and you know, recently we've had some bills that keep coming up every year. And what they want, and these are from residents who, you know, live in condominiums, they want property managers, you know, which would be the account executives who, you know, serve uh, the board to be licensed. Mm. Are you aware of those bills? I've heard about it, yeah. And, and you know, the misconception, I think, is, is that the owners who want this type of legislation they've gone to their legislators and say oh you know you, you need to license the, the property managers they think that the property managers the task is to tell the board what to do is that true that's not exactly true no uh we, we, it, it exactly explain what's wrong with that so uh, concept we we help them with a lot of uh matters on a on a day-to-day uh, -day basis but uh, we can't do much more than give recommendations to the board, and the board has to make decisions. A lot of times our recommendations is they need to uh, go to a consultant, whether it's a construction management consultant or their attorney or something along those guidelines. And so the, 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 the property manager or the account executive from the managing agent that is the contact with the board, that person, it's not that person's function to tell the board what they should be doing. No, it's, it's, we, we give them the tools that they need in order to make a good decision, and, and then it's up to them to make that decision. And, yeah. and then what you do is you, they, they set the policy, they decide, okay, we want to use contractor ABC mm -hmm. to do this work. Mm -hmm. You then implement it, right? Yes. You, you contact that, that vendor and say, okay, the board has signed your agreement. Uh, when can you, you know, when can you uh, be on site and wh what's your schedule and, and this is a person on site that you coordinate with and, and you basically do that work and then the person on site will then coordinate. It's not the board who's doing all of this. No, so before the board meeting, I'll gather multiple proposals and uh, with a comparative bid and I will bring it to them and I, I allow them to choose between that person. We may have uh, a little bit of negotiation going on if they have a question about something, and I'll assist them in that matter as well. And then they will choose one vendor. They'll, they will sign the contract, and then I will implement what, what's been decided to do. And then, and then if it's a huge job, then th there's the issue of hiring a project manager. Always recommend hiring a project manager for large projects, yes. Right, and, and this would be for things like if you want to replace the, your, your entire pipes system, yeah. your plumbing, or yeah. if you're putting in a PV system, I mean, something that, is, that costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time, you want somebody with expertise. Expertise, on. yes, because we don't have it. You know, I'm not a plumber, right? Uh, board members should not be making those decisions on their own, even if they are a plumber, right? right? They should be getting an outside consultant to make, help them make those decisions. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, and so if, if these issues come up, I mean, you, you said that you make recommendations. So if the board is undecided and, and you manage, because of your expertise in managing buildings, you can then recommend, well, this is the course of action you should take. Or, or the statute, 514B, says that you know, there's a business judgment rule. If you don't know, you've got to ask. Yes. Right? Yeah. If you don't know, you need to ask. Yeah. Right? And, exactly. and so, so if it's a legal issue, it would be, well, you need to contact the association's attorney and get a legal opinion. Get it in writing and you pay for it. Right. Or if it's an engineering issue, you hire an engineering company. And because, you know, the boards, the board people aren't, don't, don't have that expertise, mm -hmm. right? If there's a plumb, if you have a building that's leaking like a sieve and, and, and they're saying, oh, we need to figure out what's wrong, 
and they say, well, wh and they come to you and they say, okay, what do we do? And you're going to say, you know, why don't we get a consultant? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get you a list and we'll get you some people that we, you know, because of our expertise mm -hmm. and we, we deal with all these buildings, we have, all, you know, we have lists of people we use on a regular mm -hmm. basis and we know that, you know, you're going to get good advice from them. And so we'll give you a list and you can vet them. You can talk to them, interview them like you would, exactly. right? And you, you find somebody to then go and look at this problem and get you an opinion. And what if the board member says, oh, but that's going to cost some money. Yes. What would your response be to that? Well, a lot of times, if you don't do it correctly, then it can cost you more down the road. Because let's, let's think about it. if you replace all your pipes and there's a problem, you got to reopen all the walls, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it can be a much bigger problem. Uh, you know, spalling is another one where you want somebody to monitor the work, right? Uh, you don't want necessarily take the uh, contractor's word that they did such and such. You want somebody to oh, monitor yeah. oh, work and, and, and make and sure what, what the specifications the are followed. What if the yeah. contractor is the board president's cousin? And, and, and the board president says, oh, but my cousin Joe, I mean, he knows what he's doing. And, I mean, what would your response be to that? So, so if, if a board member is related, so then we'd have a conversation about disclosing that relationship and also a conversation about maybe they shouldn't be voting on the matter and they may even should leave the room as, as, as an option. They, ultimately, they should go to the attorney and discuss the situation because each one has a different nuance to it. Right. Yeah. And if it's a huge project, especially replacing pipes, mm -hmm. you really want to bring in a professional and if the board member says, oh, but we don't want to pay for it. But, you, you know, you, you can remind them about the business judgment rule that says it's part of your fiduciary duty. If you don't know, you got to ask. Yes. And you, you, and you got to pay for that report. Because yes. if that report is wrong and you've gotten a professional to do the work, that professional's got errors and omission. Yes. Yeah, so we can go that a little bit further on that. So there's, uh, like I had one project that was um, pipe replacement, painting, spalling, uh, almost 100% replacement of parking deck, as well as replacement of the recreation deck and pool. Major million dollar project right. that was going on. And so they went and they interviewed the consultants. Uh, I gave them a list of consultants. They interviewed each one, picked one, and then they went and they did their, their study and looked at uh, each different project individually. Mm -hmm. And the consultant helped them through that project. So you got to think about it. When the when it comes time, when the contractor says, uh, we want our payment, here, we need, you know, here's a million dollar bill, we need you to pay it. Well, I'm not the consultant. I can't necessarily say, yeah, they did the work according to specifications, right? The resident manager, they have to manage the building. They can't be managing a million dollar project, right? right. So you need a consultant who can uh, monitor the work on a regular basis and verify, as well as speak their language, mm -hmm. uh, a consultant. It needs to be able to have that contractor lingo, and they, they can understand each other when what's being said, and, and, uh, and they will know what the specifications are and follow the specifications and make sure that the association is only paying based on the specifications. And if a change order is needed, you have somebody there to fall back on. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to be talking about, you know, how do board members... I mean, do they get training or some kind of education to help them make these decisions? Because they're the ones, like you said, they're the ones making the decisions. You guys are the ones who implement those decisions, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to take our break now. And then when we come back, we will be talking about educating the board. All right. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation, 
we have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Okay, welcome back to Condo Insider. Uh, Jane Sugimura, I'm your host today, and we have uh, as my guest uh, David Thompson yes. from Hawaiian Management, and we're talking about how boards make decisions. Uh, and you know, we were talking about all these very complicated decisions that yeah. board members have to do, and this is a voluntary board, right? Correct. They're elected to, to their positions on the board. Is there a requirement now that they have to be certified or have some minimum level of education? No, the uh, state law does not require. All they have to do is be an owner. Okay. And so um, right now there, there is talk about, I mean, in fact, there has been for years. In fact, uh, Senator Baker, uh, many years ago, and every so often when she has a tantrum, decides that she's going to require every board member to take, pass a test before they can serve uh, because she's tired of hearing from uh, uh, condos constituents that these board members are bullies and they're just, you know, not, they're condo Nazis, I guess the term she uses. Yeah. But anyway, do you think that training, that, 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 that there is a requirement that board members need to be trained or certified? Well, I don't think it's the role of the managing agent to decide in terms of if there needs to be training, but we do always recommend education. Uh, I know our company, as well as the other property management companies, always has a, a board seminar uh, every year. We educate the uh, resident managers as well uh, on different topics. Uh, there's CAI classes, there's HCCA classes. Um, I and think the state still does a class. Uh, Condorotum. Yeah. Condorotum. Uh, so there's, we always advocate the education, correct. Okay, and you know, uh, right now we're hearing about uh, a proposed bill that would require all board members uh, to go through an orientation, a short orientation of maybe two hours and uh, with their uh, association attorney. Uh, and basically the two hour uh, uh, orientation would cover things like fiduciary duty, uh, conflicts of interest, the business judgment rule, uh, and the director's obligation to practice independent judgment, code of conduct, and confidentiality of executive session matters. Do you think that this would be helpful to board members who have to do this? Um, I think that uh, the, all board members need to be educated. Um, I don't think the managing agent should take a role in terms of legislative matters, right? Mm -hmm. That's not our role. Uh, we're here to. Uh, uh, follow the law and uh, help board members achieve their goals. And all those topics in terms of conflict of entry, fiduciary duty, business judgment rule, independent judgment, all those are important topics that should be covered during education. And you've worked with enough boards. I mean, do you see a need? Would you see uh, uh, a, a, an issue where some of the board members may not know what fiduciary, that they have a fiduciary duty or the business judgment rule? I mean. First of all, these things are all in the statute. And I guess there's no requirement that the uh, board members, when they are elected, uh, you know, um, read the statute. Although I think, I know in our association, when you're elected from the, uh, on the board, you get a copy. We actually give, besides getting, you know, we prepare a pack for new board members, we give them a copy of the declaration, the bylaws, the current house rules, and the current version of 514B. Mm. Okay, that's what we give them. Um, and I, you know, and we're, they're told to read them. So I don't know if they actually do read them, but you know, the, it, uh, you know, there seems to be an issue. Uh, I, I think uh, amongst uh, the industry that th that you know there there is a need to educate board members because you know we have things like lawsuits and I mean there was one in Maui uh, where it turned out that uh, the president of the board and the board members uh, ended up in a jury trial. Yeah. I watched that show two weeks ago. And, and, 
And it was amazing some of the stuff that came out about, and, and it was clear that they, they weren't familiar with fiduciary duty, that they had a fiduciary duty to the other members of the association. Also, it turned out that they didn't understand that they had to act independently. In other words, they couldn't blindly follow the board president who mm. turned out to be a bully. Mm. And, and so this was a situation where you have a board president who's a bully and eight members who are sheep mm -hmm. and just blindly following. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that, and, and, and what happened is that this association uh, ends up uh, paying, I think the judgment is over two million and it's getting appealed. And, but in the meantime, I think one of the insurance companies is paying, which means that the insurance premium for that association will likely go up. And we heard at the seminar, the Sue Savio, who represents so many associations, say that all of our DNO insurance coverage, the policy uh, Unfortunately. Yeah, is, is going to go up because there's only two or three carriers in the state who even you know, offer that coverage. And so when you have a huge lawsuit like this happen, then um, it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I think you know, for that reason, it would behoove uh, you know, the um, uh, board members who are listening to this show and you know, to talk to their colleagues and other people who sit on boards you know, to, to find out what their obligations are. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it would make your job a lot easier too. Yes, so uh, we do a lot of education, not only with the board members, but also the uh, owners, where we're always, they have a question about something and we always try to coach them along and help them understand how all this works together. You know, when we, when we buy a condo, we get all those documents through escrow. We're supposed to be reading it at that time. Mm -hmm. A lot of us didn't read it, right? Mm -hmm. We just initialed and moved on because mm -hmm. we were more interested in moving in our unit than right. we were about reading the, the governing documents. Right. And uh, if you were like me, you know, uh, shortly after I uh, moved into my unit, I had somebody come up to me and say, hey, would you please join the board? And then, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, will you be the board president, right? So. Uh, you can quickly uh, get into this situation where you you have a, a governing documents that you may not have read, but then all of a sudden you're you're uh, in charge of the association. So we always try to educate and keep people informed and let them know where those education sources are. And yeah. and when 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 you're talking about we, you're talking about Hawaiiana, and and the other management yeah, the, companies. Yes. And mm -hmm. those courses are you are usually free. Yes. You don't charge for those no. courses. No. Right. The CAI courses are, are free, uh, are not free, and neither are the HCCA ones. Yes, but, but you can put that in your budget. So we always plan for that in the budget. Usually, you know, we'll put in $55 a month for one or two people to go and, on a monthly and, and basis, the, but you can do, yeah. And the cost of going to these seminars is covered by statute. In other words, if a board member wants to go yes. to these seminars, all they have to do is tell their uh, account executive to sign, sign me up. up. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, we let them know in advance. That, you know, here's the next seminar. This is the topics that's going to be discussed. Right. Yes. And and you encourage them to go. Absolutely. Right. And you know, and and one of the things that um, that we hear a lot about, and it, it comes up every time. You know, Senator Baker has one of her rants because she's gotten all these phone calls, and she decides she's going to, you know, make everybody take a test. The response she gets is, but Senator, if you do that, nobody will serve. If you make people you know, attend mandatory classes and be certified and be, you know, pass a test, who's going to want to serve? And then we already have issues trying to get people to serve on the board. And this is a voluntary board. Do you have a response to that? Well, that's a question for the legislator to work out. But I think there's already a hurdle just to get on the board in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. uh, although a lot of people want to serve the board and serve their community, uh, but it's also there's a commitment level, you know, that you know that you're going to be doing, you know, every month or every three months and, and get mm -hmm. involved. So I think that's probably a bigger hurdle than actually education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but you know, the, the, but a lot of the, the problems that end up in these lawsuits and, and one of the, the, the big hurdles and one of the disagreeable parts about being on a board is that, you know, there is a dispute. And when you have, when you live in a building, a multifamily building with a hundred families 
or 300 families or 400 families or the Marco Polo 600 families. I mean, there's bound to be a dispute, whether it's between the neighbors, whether it's between the owners and the board, whether it's between the owners and the, and the resident manager. You know, with a community that size, you, you, you can't, you know, go, you know, it's, 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 it's uh, you know, it's going to happen. And so you, you need to figure out how you're going to resolve it. And to me, if, if, if people were educated and they knew about fiduciary duty, they wouldn't, you know, and the business judgment rule. I mean, these things are all there to protect them. You know, and if they knew about it, uh, they, would, they should take advantage of it. And, you know, so for those of you who are listening, if you haven't been to a seminar or to Condorama or to your management a you know, agent's free uh, seminars about uh, condominium laws and, and, and uh, board responsibilities, you need to think twice about it because, you know, one day, I mean, you're going to get a dispute where the board is going to be sued. And it's not pleasant because what happens is they sue all the board members, right? Right. They sue all the board members. And that means that then you have to call, you personally, if you're on the board, you need to then tell your carrier, your homeowner's carrier, that you've been sued. Uh, you know, so, so it, it does affect you as, as you know, as a, a unit owner and as a board member. So in order to avoid all this, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I would really think that educate, educating yourself on the condominium statute and what a board is supposed to do, you know, and, and, and recognize that you've got a fiduciary duty. You cannot make decisions based on conflict of interest. And if you're not sure, you have to ask. That's what the business judgment rule says. If you don't know, you need to ask. Yes. You need to ask a professional and you need to get a written opinion and you need to pay for it. Yes. And, and, and yes, it's painful because, you know, attorneys are not free. Engineers are not free. Accountants are not free. They do not work for free. And the good thing I tell people, when you pay for their opinion, I mean, just make sure that you're the consultant that you're dealing with, the, uh, the attorney or the engineer, has got errors and omission. Because if they're wrong, you sue them. Yes, everybody has to be insured. Right. Yeah, they want to work for the association. Yeah, so, so, you know, so this is why. And then when you get an opinion, and you, re you act on that opinion, even if you're wrong and you get sued, the insurance will protect you because you follow the business judgment rule. Yes. Right? Yeah, as long as you do your best you can in order to make a good, sound judgment, then you should be okay. Right, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons for the business judgment rule. If you don't know, you need to ask. You need to ask a professional in that area get a written opinion that you pay for, mm -hmm. and when you get that, and, and if you don't like that opinion, you can get another opinion. Get another one, yeah. You can get another opinion. You can get several opinions, and you need to pay for them. You need to pay for them, uh, and then, uh, you, you, you know, based on all these opinions that you have, you make the best judgment, and even if you're wrong, you're protected under the DNO because you follow the business judgment rule, which says if you don't know, you need to ask. Yes. And then once you ask and get it in writing and you act on that, even if you're wrong, you're protected. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so that's, that's, I think, the best reason, I think, you know, for, 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 for going to these education classes. And if we had everybody going to these classes and educating themselves, even self-education, we wouldn't have a need for this legislation and we wouldn't have to listen to Senator Baker's rants every three or four years. You know, when something blows up and, and she wants to know how come, why is this happening? And, you know, if we, the, only way, the only way we can fix this is if we make everybody, you know, go and take classes and pass a test, which, you know, we just don't think is doable. But anyway, thank you for... Thank you very much for uh, having me on. Yeah, thank really you for coming it. on our show, and thank you for being uh, our guest and talking to us about decision-making by condo boards. And next week, please join us for another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, and uh, and if, you, if I don't see you next week, have a happy holiday. We're getting close to Christmas, so have a Merry Christmas. Thank you, and aloha.